How is this ideal attained? Sacrifice your littleness, your limited, finite eh, self. The minute you sacrifice this, you realize the Supreme Self in you. That's why I said sacrifice is the law of life. Stop this I, me, mine. Then many a times we think sacrifice means sacrificing things. Oh, I have given up my home, I have given up my money. That's not sacrifice. Come, sometimes we come across people who sacrifice their big palatial home in the city, come all the way to Rishikesh and say, Swamiji, I have renounced everything, I want to be a Swami. Oh, is that so wonderful? Huh? Okay, stay for a while, let us see. In two days, he will be waiting at the post office, waiting for a letter from the home. Or sometimes he goes into a cave, sits there, and if anybody comes and picks up his begging book, ooh, that's given to me by my guru. <laughs> he sacrificed the whole palace. Here he is attached to his begging bowl. So it's not running away from the world or seeing, throwing things away would make you a monk, a renunciate. A person who sacrificed everything. Sacrifice your attachment. The I, me, mine. The minute that happens, you become enlightened. Not even a little thing to say, this is mine. The poor man, after several years of life, begging and requesting, he got a beautiful boy. By God's grace. Who is that poor man? Abraham. Abraham. But just because you are so much, so mad after a boy, I give you this boy. Keep him for a while. But you remember, it's my boy. After the age, certain age, give it back to me. It was that condition. Like Markandeya. In the Hindu stories, you have Markandeya. Somebody wanted a son, prayed, and God appeared. Say, Okay, I can give you a son, but what type of son you need? A good boy, very devoted to God, who will live only for 16 years, or a rebellious, boisterous fellow who will live for 100 years? <laughs> Which boy you want? And suddenly he said, I don't need to have a problem for 100 years. <laughs> Let me be happy with 16 years. So he got a boy for 16. And that the time came, exactly after the 16th year, death came. Because he was an intelligent boy, he went and hugged the Shivalinga. Sir, I take refuge in, me, in you. Protect me from this death. So God appeared and removed the death and made him to live forever at that age. It's exactly like that in Abraham. After that year, come on, bring it to me. He has sacrificed everything except the attachment towards this little boy. He forgot that he was given to him, not 
originally his child. But God insisted, no, even that little attachment towards your own beautiful son, who is not really your son, has to be given up. Give it to me. Then when he was ready to give it, God appeared, okay, I'm not interested in your son. I just wanted to see how much of an attachment you have on that boy. Now you don't have an attachment, fine. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to sacrifice him. See, that is the secret. A monastery, an ashram, or a spiritual seeker's place means that is where they learn to sacrifice. Every religion has this as an important part, sacrifice, a sacrificial altar. Because without that sacrifice, there's no real peace, real happiness, there's no enlightenment. I forgot to say my pun. Eh? Some of you might have expected that and disappointed. Eh? I used to say that God named him Isaac because the I has to be sacrificed. Once the I gets sacrificed, eh? the person who sacrificed the I becomes Abraham. Abraham. It's an Indian name. Brahm means Supreme God. They just deviated a little called Abraham. 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 Super. Brahm. Hmm. What is the biggest obstacle to, obtain, to obtaining this ideal? Attachment. I, me, mine is the biggest obstacle. Mine is the most dangerous obstacle because it, if you put it around you, it explodes. Mine. So don't throw mine around you and make it into a war field filled with mines. Renounce the mine. So the obstacle is I, me, mine, aham and mama. Huh? Hmm. What do you think of death? What is it? What continues after death? Death is only to the body. Death means you just discard the body. The Bhagavad Gita beautifully presents the truth. Death is nothing but you are discarding your old shirt. Birth means buying a new shirt. You get into a new shirt. So death is only to the body. That's why every religion, directly or indirectly, knowingly or unknowingly, they say that. Earth to earth, fire to fire, water to water. Why the body is made of five elements? So brick to brick, mortar to mortar, cement to cement, metal to metal. You break the house with the owner, it went away. Thiruvallavar says, like the little bird cracks open the shell and flies out, you fly out of this little shell. You call that death. Strictly speaking, death is nothing but a change of form. The material dies to become a robe. Wood dies to become furniture. Clay dies to become brick. Brick dies to become building, wall. So transformation of one form into another form the previous, previous form is changed to a new form. So the previous form is dead, the new form is born. That's all about death. 
literally there is nothing that is destroyed. That's why there is a saying in English, nothing is lost when a candle burns. The candle burns and melts, completely disappears after some time. But nothing is lost. Why? Because the wax became vapor, <laughs> went away. You don't see the candle, but it's in the form of vapor somewhere. So that is death. And the spirit or the life force or the energy that is within the body, making the body move, goes away. Like a turned switch turned off and the fan stops. So the spirit eh, is the one that uses the body to function. Like even electricity. If you want your electricity to function you, you have to have gadgets. Without gadgets, what good of you are having wire all over the house? <laughs> You have wired the house, you have electricity in the house, but you don't have light, no fan, no television, no radio. Why? Because gadgets are not there. So body is a gadget, life is the energy behind, electricity behind.